Hey, Buzzheads, Curtis Tucker here with That Buzz Guy Podcast. Welcome to another episode on this beautiful Friday. I'm getting to record this finally during the afternoon here in Enid, Oklahoma. It's a beautiful day. I'm in my office and I have the door wide open. I've been putting a little bit of food out by my office door and I've got two squirrels that have been eating out of it and two cardinals, a male and a female. So I may uh, look over to the door every now and then see if they're uh, trying to attack and eat all of my food. Also, uh, because I have the door wide open, I am about uh, a yard's width away from a, a main road here in my hometown. So you might hear a few trucks and I'm also a block away from the road track, so I have a feeling a train will come by during this episode, and then I'm also right underneath the flight path for Vance Air Force Base, so we could get some jet noise going over. But anyway, that's part of recording right here in my studio, and if you guys know anything, you know I'm gonna tell you it doesn't matter. Just get started, just start recording something. Don't worry about uh, everything being perfect. So. Uh, let's get into today's episode and uh, didn't get it recorded last night had uh, my oldest daughter is a senior valedictorian for Enid High School uh, graduating class of 402 and she was number one in her class so they had a virtual graduation last night and I was with family watching that and then they're gonna try to have a real graduation in June but anyway congrats to my daughter so that's why I didn't get this recorded last night so we're gonna get it recorded today. And today's episode is all about personal branding. One of those uh, keyword phrases or things that you're hearing all over the internet and uh, podcasting and blogs and stuff here lately. So just thought I would give you my take and, and uh, this is just my take on personal branding. A lot of people out there may not agree because I have been listening to a few podcasts and I've heard them talk about personal branding and there was several things that they were talking about that I definitely do not agree with. So I'm going to give you my take on personal branding. Um, the name of the episode is uh, what is person, what is a personal brand and how do you get one? So, um, and then just want to do a quick reminder. If you guys haven't listened to any of my other episodes, uh, just, uh, wanted you to know that, I do have a little bit of a background in working online, working for myself, being an entrepreneur. I bought my first domain name in 1999, and that's when I built my first website. It was a cartooning website, and then by the end of 2003, which I guess that's what, four years? 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, almost uh, four years later, uh, I was making enough money that that's when I quit my full-time job. Now, I'd gone. Uh, I'd been working part-time for probably a year or six months and then I went and I quit my job full-time and it was a uh, director of advertising job and then decided to stay home and work online. I was doing cartooning and Google AdSense and building websites. So um, looking back at, at it now, after 20 years, um, that three and a half to four years seems really short, but I just the reason I'm telling you guys this is if you're part of this um, pandemic where you've lost your job and you're listening to my shows to try to start your own side gig or side hustle or a business, is you're gonna have to be patient. You're not gonna be able to jump out there and make money within just a couple of months. So uh, it did take me four years to uh, really get going and making enough money. Now I was making you know money way before um, four years, probably just within six months. So. Uh, anyway, be prepared for a little bit of uh, patience, and if you're not making, you know, full-time income within a in within one year, uh, don't don't be depressed or don't think you failed. It's just it takes a little while to build up. You've got to build up that personal brand and get you a following. And then um, the cool thing about internet and making money online is once it starts, it's kind of like a snowball, and it will just keep growing. So uh, anyway, there's that. Just want to let you guys know about that. Um, as far as a personal brand, now of course I do have my own personal brand now, which is Curtis Tucker, that buzz guy, but I did not actually start um, working on that until really 2019, just last year. I'd been thinking about it probably since 2018 or so, and I did a little bit of stuff to get it get it going, but I never really jumped in it, into it until really this um, COVID-19 pandemic started. Then I thought, you know, I need to get this podcast online for people that need help getting started. So so I didn't really start working on my brand 
uh, really until just, you know, probably less than a year ago. But um, I did know the value of a personal brand all the way back in 2004. And that's actually when I bought my domain name, curtistucker.com, because I knew um, I was going to be a uh, personal blogger or a uh, daddy blogger back then. And I was going to talk about, um, you know, living at home and working at home and all that. But um, it was making too much money doing the other stuff, so it didn't work out. But, you know, back in that day, in 2004, I was following blogs and personal brands of people like Aree Drummond. She was the pioneer woman. There was John Chow. There was Shoe Money, Joel Calm, and then Heather B. Armstrong, um, also known as Deuce. So they all had their own blogs and their own personal brands, and uh, they were teaching people how to do different things online. Pioneer Woman was cooking and, and doing photography and homeschooling. So they were all building their own brands back in 2004. And again, that's kind of when I got a little bit of the bug and I thought, well, I'm going to buy CurtisTucker.com and start building my own brand. But again, uh, just had so much going on, was making enough money doing the other stuff. I never uh, really got it going. But I did uh, come up with a uh, kind of my signature um, back then. And it was, I called myself that sneaker wearing entrepreneurial cartoonist internet guy. And so everywhere that I would leave a comment or on my website, that was kind of my tagline. And, uh, you know, again, it w uh, my plan was to be a daddy blogger talking about parenting and also being raised and living in the 1970s. And if you know anything about me, you know, I loved the 1970s growing up then. And uh, I've got the 70s Buzz podcast with my partner in crime, uh, Todd Wheeler. So you guys can cruise over there and listen to that. But um, again, the Google AdSense and the cartooning were doing so well that I kind of put that aside. And actually, CurtisTucker.com sat empty, uh, I believe, for, for several years. But you can go to the Wayback Machine and you can check out some of my old um, posts. And some of those I'm actually uh, redoing and using on that buzzguy.com blog. So you might see some old uh, blog posts that I wrote years and years ago, and then I'm kind of revamping them. So anyway, so that's, um, you know, kind of my history on personal branding right now. Uh, you know, my main uh, focus is trying to get that buzz guy um, to become a bigger personal brand so more and more people will know who I am and just to build up a bigger following. Now, uh, here on that buzz guy podcast, I don't sell a course. I don't, I'm not trying to get you to join a uh, mastermind. I don't have a sales funnel. This is basically just information that I am trying to share with you guys because I want everybody to have the freedom to work at home like I'm doing and like I've done for the past 20 years. I'm sitting here in sneakers and shorts and a t-shirt. Uh, I took my girls out to the airport to have lunch, came back and now I'm recording this podcast and I could go out and work in the yard this afternoon. Um, just total freedom to do what I want as long as at some point during the day or the week I get uh, my work done for Enid Buzz and the other different little uh, businesses that I have going. So. Um, creating that personal brand, it kind of slowly starts making you kind of the expert or the guru in whatever field or whatever you're trying to um, present to people. And, uh, you know, once I started Ian and Buzz and then started doing um, some lives and became, you know, and, that, and that's where my, when my name came from, uh, from doing Ian and Buzz. But, you know, that led to a lot of opportunities, uh, meaning... Uh, people started calling, wanting me to talk um, at speaking engagements. They wanted to interview me um, and things like that. But then, you know, it also leads to, for some people, and hopefully one of these days, there's book deals, there's more media coverage, uh, there's a whole bunch of things like that. So a personal brand basically raises you up above pretty much everybody else. You know, if there's five guys and they're all just kind of average, you know, if one of them has their own personal brand, then he's going to stand out from the other four. And so uh, building your personal brand just kind of helps you get out there a little more and um, and all that. So so with me, I'm eventually going to split. Um, so right now, that buzz guy is really associated heavily with Enid Buzz, but eventually I'm going to split that where Enid Buzz just stays primarily, you know, a community website in that buzz guy. Uh, I'm going to take that brand and kind of build on it. And it's going to be more of a help brand where uh, I blog, podcast, and do video shows for people. And again, teach them 
how to do all of that stuff. So let's get into some of the the nuts and bolts of a personal brand. Now, here's one thing that I listened to yesterday that drove me crazy. And uh, the, the guy that I was listening to kept saying that your personal brand is your reputation and it could not be further from the truth. So I think I hear my Cardinals. Uh, no, they're not over there. But um, so your personal brand is not your reputation. They are two completely different things. Your personal brand is what you say about yourself. So you create your personal brand. So I've created, uh, you know, my look, my style is sneakers, shorts, t-shirts, ball cap worn backwards. That's my style. I created that myself. So your personal brand is, is what you say and what you create about yourself. Your reputation is what others say about you. So, you know, if I look sloppy or I'm messy or I don't get work done and people say, you know, hey, you know, he's a really nice guy, but boy, he's sloppy and he, you know, doesn't get things done on time and always looks like a slouch. Now that's, that's kind of your reputation. That's what other people, you can't you know, really control what other people say about you. Now, you know, in some sense you can, but, you know, you most people have their reputation and it is what it is. So, you know, your reputation is more about your integrity and your values, where your personal brand is more your interest, your knowledge. And uh, now the one thing I will say is your reputation definitely can influence your brand. So, if you have a really, you know, cool brand and, and you're this high energy, fun guy, but your reputation is that, you know, behind the scenes you're really mean and nobody likes to be around you, you know, so your personal brand is this energetic, fun, talkative, knowledgeable guy, but your reputation is people don't like to be around you because, you know, you're mean or something. So that, that kind of shows you the difference between a reputation and a brand. Um, when people go online, they are going to, well, when people first hear about you, if they don't meet you, but they hear about you somewhere, first place that they're going to go is online where they're going to try to find more information about you. And usually one of the first places they're going to end up is your website. And so when they get to your website, they're going to learn about your personal brand. You're going to have uh, pictures of yourself. You're going to have maybe a logo. You're going to have an about me page where it's going to have your you know, your background and things that you've done, things that you believe in. So that again is your personal brand. But if they do a Google search and then some reviews pop up or some forums pop up where people are talking about you and maybe they're talking about the services or the work that you do and they're either talking really good, they could, they could be talking really good about it, the reviews and things like that, or they could be talking bad. Now that's your reputation. So you can't control the reviews that people leave for you. So, so again, that's the difference between a personal brand and your reputation, two completely separate things. So um, a reputation is something that you earn and a uh, personal brand is basically something that you create. Your reputation can have a negative or positive effect on that personal brand. So everything that you do uh, will contribute to one or the other. It will either contribute to your personal brand or it will contribute to your reputation. So uh, let's get uh, talking a little bit more. So that's the difference between those two. So as far as a personal brand, what a lot of people don't realize is because of uh, the internet, social media, and uh, things like that, almost everybody already has somewhat of a personal brand, whether they want to have one or not. And it's just because people put, if now if you don't get online and you don't put anything on like Facebook or Instagram and you just don't, you know, post anything, then you're probably not building any type of a personal brand. And, you know, people may only know what they learn about you in conversations with you. But if you are posting stuff online, um, you start, your, your personal brand starts to develop. So, uh, you know, I know here in my hometown, there's a guy that, uh, you know, I, whether he knows he's got a personal brand or not, he does. And one of the things that's associated with his personal brand is VWs, Volkswagens, because he's always working on them. He's always talking about them, buying them or selling them. And every time he does, he posts that on Facebook. So over the years, people have kind of kind of seen him as kind of this VW guru. And every, anytime they find a picture or information about VWs, they tag him or they share things with him, which even more builds up his expertise as being the guy in our hometown that knows about VWs. Now, whether he's a, you know, uh, expert or mechanic or not, he is now associated as being the guy to go to 
for information on VW. So that's that's kind of his personal brand was starting to be developed, whether he wanted to or not. He's also uh, an artist, uh, kind of creative. He wears uh, hats, and I'm not talking like ball caps. He wears like fedoras and Indiana Jones style hats, has longer hair, kind of dresses in black and, and kind of has this almost hippie-ish uh, laid back style. So that's his, that's more, you know, that feeds into his personal brand. So again, whether he knows it or not, he's kind of got this kind of creative, cool, sophisticated, um, hippie-ish brand, uh, personal brand that he's created for himself. So so the way that people see you um, and, and they see your personal brand is basically because of what you put out there. So if you're dressing in a certain way or you're um, you know, if you're on one side or the other on politics or you're, you're being obnoxious or you're being really quiet, all of that feeds into your personal brand. And so you want uh, to only feed into your personal brand and your reputation, you know, only positive things, things that make you look um, good. So be aware of that. Everything that you post online uh, is going to be found, can be found, can be read, and does feed into your personal brand. Uh, now, as far as a personal brand, not everybody needs a personal brand. I would say if you're trying to do anything online to attract attention, to sell, to lead, to instruct, to entertain, to inform, then you definitely 100% are going to need a personal brand. If you're just an employee and you like to wake up at 8 and go to work and come home at 5 and watch TV and don't do anything else, then you definitely do not need a personal brand. Now, you know, let's say you're an employee and there's, uh, you know, 100 employees at the business and they're looking for somebody to promote. They're probably going to promote somebody within that system that probably has a personal brand, somebody that's that's seen as a go-getter and they dress, you know, professionally and they show up on time and they now showing up on time, that's kind of more your reputation. But, um, you know, as far as your personal brand, maybe you know, you like I said, you dress nice, and and you're you talk about um, motivation and inspiration, and you're a leader to people. That that all feeds into your personal brand. Now that could help you get a promotion or a raise as far as uh, being an employee. But if you're just an employee and you're happy doing whatever you're doing, then you do not or are not going to need a personal brand. But everybody else, you are going to need to build up your personal brand, which, like I said, you are doing already. So um, all that's required to build a brand is just take what you know and share it with others. That's basically what a personal, building a personal brand is. And with today, everybody's doing that online. You're either doing that through uh, podcast, social media, uh, video form, or blogging. And so you're informing, entertaining, or instructing consistently, and that's what starts to build your own personal brand and if you do that over, you know, even a short period of time and people become accustomed, so, so like me, building my brand, so now I'm, I'm podcasting every week, I'm blogging every week, I'm adding more photos with phrases on my social media and I'm tagging the, you know, hashtags entrepreneur and motivation and, and uh, talking about web design and SEO and so I'm, I'm building my brand so people are starting to see that and now people are coming to me and emailing me and asking me questions about marketing and social media and things like that web design because now I'm kind of becoming the expert of the guru in those fields because I'm building up that personal brand as that buzz guy so that's what you're going to want to do you're going to want to take all of those uh, different things and start building on that personal brand uh, to have a successful personal brand, you want to make yourself as unique as possible. Uh, personal branding is all about building a marketable image which you are able to mold. And so again, that's the difference between a personal brand and a reputation is you can mold your personal brand. Um, you basically combine all of your skills, your talents, your personal life experiences, and that's going to make you unique. So there could be you know, there's, a, I don't know, tens of thousands of guys uh, talking about uh, personal branding and marketing and SEO and how to start a side gig and how to make money online. I mean, people have been doing that for years, but what makes me different is I've got my own take on it. I've been doing it since 1999. I, I hear guys doing podcasts that have been doing it for, you know, in the entrepreneur world for two years, and I kind of shake my head and I wonder, how are these guys even doing a podcast on how to start a business after only two years, but 
Um, so that makes me different. I've, I knew the internet before social media, and, and so I've got a lot of background and experience. Not to say I'm better, smarter, more knowledgeable, because some of these young guys are, you know, they know a lot more than I do, but, um, you know, I have a different take on it. I have a, you know, I'm the kid that grew up in the 1970s take on everything. So, so make yourself more unique than anybody else and people will gravitate to that. Even, even your voice. I mean, some people may be irritated by my voice or the ums or the ahs that I say. I know there's some podcasts that I've tried to listen to and it literally is the person's voice or some of the things that they say that have uh, made me quit listening. And so, uh, so anyway, so there's a whole bunch of different ways to make you unique compared to other people in your field. So don't worry if you're getting into a field where there's already, you know, a hundred people in it, uh, it doesn't matter. There's always room for somebody new and unique and uh, you're gonna be able to give your own take on that. And that's uh, part of your personal brand. So. Um, a well-crafted brand can help you carve a niche in an industry and make you a thought, uh, make you thought of as an industry expert again. Like I say, so I'm the guy that in Enid, Oklahoma, that's always talking about cartooning and, and I know, you know, the ins and outs of uh, the cartooning business. And so I'm probably the most authoritative guy in my town of 50,000 that uh, knows about cartoons and then other things as well. So. Uh, just keep putting that information out there and the person that does that that has the personal brand they may not be the person in town that knows the most but because they have built that personal brand they're going to be recognized as a person that knows the most and that's what you want so um, your personal brand tells people what you're known for and what you stand for it's ongoing and your personal brand never really ends it's just it's always there once you set it until you change it, that's what you're always going to be thought of. Now, the one thing that I will say is don't uh, be afraid to pivot or change your personal brand. And you don't have to completely reinvent, rename everything to change your personal brand. You can do that slowly. So my personal brand, again, used to be cartooning, SEO, uh, Google AdSense, whereas now as that buzz guy, it's more... Uh, marketing, building a side gig, social media. I mean, they didn't even have social media when I started back, you know, in the beginning. So, so that, you know, so pivot, you can pivot a little bit, you can pivot completely. I know, you know, some people that have gone from, you know, uh, I knew there's a guy that went from being an attorney to being a cartoonist. So he completely pivoted and uh, didn't change his name or anything, you know, so you can pivot, don't feel like you're stuck. Once you get started, don't feel like you're stuck and can't ever change because there is definitely room to pivot. So um, just use all your uh, different characteristics, traits, and weave those into your brand. And uh, you'll, you know, you're gonna be, uh, be able to build that up above your competition. Um, use all of, you know, your quirkiness, your adventurous, your uniqueness. Uh, the tools to build a personal brand, and I'm kind of him hawing here because I'm kind of looking over the notes. I don't have like a, a set of like 10 things you need to do, which makes it a little easier. So I'm looking over my notes. So this, all this information is, is typed out on that buzzguy.com blog. Um, so the next little section is tools to build your personal brand. Uh, number one, and I don't, even though, even if we're not talking about uh, building a personal brand, everybody needs a website. Did you guys hear me? Everybody, no matter what you do, who you are, you eventually are going to need a website. Build a website as soon as possible. And so, but to build a personal brand, it's 1000% you're going to need a website. That website is really what's going to mold and promote your personal brand because when people hear about you, the first thing they're going to want to do is go to a website to find out more about you. And that's where you're going to have photos and about me and uh, videos and, and things like that. So you want to have everything that describes you and your personal brain. You want that on your website. Um, and more oftentimes than not, that's where people are going to be introduced to you before they ever meet you. So you have to have a positive, a, you know, something really unique uh, to present to them on your website. Don't have a really boring, bland, cheap website with no information you know don't just have your name on there definitely have pictures and video and everything else that you can cram on there 
So um, also when building your personal brand, it's almost all, you know, in today's day and age, it's almost as important to be on all social media channels. And I know that sounds daunting and some people may say, no, you know, pick one and stick with it. No, I think if you're building a personal brand, you need to be everywhere. So, um, you know, kind of decide what you're going to do, what your voice is, what your style is, and then you need to use that on all of the social media. And basically, when I say all of them, I'd say, you know, basically Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and don't forget about LinkedIn. And then whatever the latest hot platform is right now, that would be TikTok. A while back, it was Snapchat. Um, you know, some of them that may come and go, you just, you want to be on there while they're hot, but if they cool down and disappear, then just kind of leave those alone. But, you know, the standards, the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you want to have some type of a presence on there. And that's where, um, you know, your, your personal branding comes in because if, if you're using your name or a made up name, so like that buzz guy, I want to be able to have people go to any one of those social media platforms and find me by typing in that buzz guy. And then I'm probably going to be providing the same information on all of those, but I might be presenting it in a different way. And that's the, those are the things that you're going to need to learn. And that's why you need to be hands on and do all this your, yourself and not have your, you know, 14 year old niece doing your website and your Instagram and your Twitter for you. Um, you can have them do that after you learned it on your own, but you definitely need to learn that stuff on your own. So you understand it and you know, uh, that if somebody's working for you, whether they're doing a good job or not. So check on that, learn all that. Uh, and another thing is, if you're thinking, you know, man, I don't have time to do, you know, website and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and LinkedIn, um, what you got to, and, and some people won't, I'll, I'll admit, if, you, if you've got a full-time job, I, I would never tell anybody to quit your full-time job and start a side gig knowing that you're not going to make money right away. So, uh, the best thing is to do is to keep your day job and transition slowly into your side gig. But, you know, if you are doing a side gig, like right now, there's, a, you know, 35 million people unemployed. So there's a lot of people that aren't having to go to work. So, so right now, if you're unemployed, this should be your full job. So that means 40 hours a week. You, you, if you don't have a job, you should be working on getting a job or starting your own side gig. And that means putting in at least... 40 hours a week and to fill that 40 hours a week, that's where you're building content and you're putting on all these social media platforms. So in reality, you do have time to do all that because that's your job. So my job is to do podcasts and update websites and gather information. That's my job. And so that's what I do, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours a day, but uh, I enjoy it. So uh, it makes it pretty easy. Uh, the more personality you can add to your brand, the easier uh, it will be for your audience to find you. They're going to start to relate to you. Um, over time, you're going to be able to build a community of like-minded people who value your skill, your thoughts, and they're going to be willing to trade their hard-earned money for what you are trying to sell them. So again, like I said, I'm not selling courses or really nothing right now, but I want you all to learn from me, start your own side gigs, and then eventually I'm going to come up with stuff. Maybe I'll start out with some t-shirts with some motivational sayings or some logos or, um, you know, maybe I will come up with a, a small course or, you know, I don't PDF files or, or something, but, you know, eventually you're going to want to make money. And so, but uh, my main thing right now is not trying to make money with this podcast. It's trying to help people through the hard times that everybody's having. So, but once you get going, you know, you're going to want to have a personal brand that people associate closely enough with that they're going to um, use their hard earned money to either buy your information, your entertainment, or uh, your, you know, your skills. So, uh, to build a more uh, personal brand more quickly, you're going to need to use visuals online. And I can tell you that 1000% uh, when I first started. Uh, the business that I've got going now called Enid Buzz. In the beginning, people had no idea if uh, you know our chamber was doing it or the newspaper. They didn't know if it was a man or a woman, if it was a group. You know, they knew there was no personal brand, no no brand person behind it, and so nobody really knew anything about it. But then once I started doing video, and then Facebook Live came out, and I started doing live streaming, uh, which has probably been within the last year and a half, two years, where I've really been doing a lot more 
live streaming, my personal brand has gone through the ceiling. So if you want to build a personal brand and you're afraid of being on camera, you're probably going to be run into a little bit of trouble. Now, there are people that can build, you know, uh, radio DJs build huge personal brands by just using their voice, which you can work. Now, that works really well because they're on the radio, uh, but you could build a personal brand by just doing podcasting and not having to do uh, pictures and video. But I would suggest, you know, uh, it's going to go quicker and people are going to recognize you. So that, you know, celebrities are celebrities because they're recognizable and people want to be seen they want to, you know, take a selfie with a celebrity to say, hey, I, you know, met this person. So uh, doing things visually is really going to help your personal brand, especially live streaming, because they're going to see you. They're going to see how you act, how you move, how you, what your voice sounds like, what your inflections are. You know, if you have a southern draw or a, you know, northwest, you know, so they're going to get to know you a lot more personally by watching you on video. So don't be afraid to do videos like right now I'm uh, doing a video. So I'm recording this podcast. I'm recording it with my iPhone and then I will upload that to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV. And really, it's just the exact same thing as you're listening to, but it's in video form. The uh, audio quality isn't quite as good, but some people like to go to YouTube. Cool thing about YouTube is it's a huge search engine. So in, in all of these videos that I upload to YouTube, I'm going to try to use titles and descriptions of things that people might be looking for. So hopefully one of these days, somebody's gonna be looking for a video on how to uh, work on your personal brand. My video will come up and then they'll listen to it and they'll realize that I have a podcast. They'll start, they'll subscribe to my podcast. Oh, by the way, please go subscribe to that YouTube channel and subscribe to my podcast on iTunes. Uh, it really helps me uh, move up in the ranking. So anyway, but uh, that's all going to build uh, onto your personal brand. Um, and again, like I said, especially with Facebook, uh, was where I really took off. And that's where my name came from was so many people recognized me. They didn't, a lot of people couldn't remember who I was or what my name was, but they would look at me and say, Hey, aren't you that buzz guy? Or aren't you Enid buzz? And then I started thinking, well, yeah, I am that buzz guy. So, um, having a memorable personal brand makes it virtually impossible for your competitors to compete against you. Now they're gonna be able to compete against you in service and price and maybe even knowledge, but you know, hopefully there's nobody doing what I'm doing that's going to have a ball cap on backwards and wear sneakers all the time. And uh, you know, having grown up in the 70s and have the same memories and personal style and quirks that I do. So that's where that personal branding makes you super cool to somebody. You know, there's different singers and celebrities and uh, actors that some of them that you're really drawn to and it's because of maybe their personal brand maybe they're really cool and you think man you know I would really like to be like that guy well that's their them using their personal brand so uh, when building your personal brand why don't you uh, think about creating a brand message uh, or basically another way is uh, calling it a brand statement which is usually a one to two sentence um, paragraph that explains your values, who you serve, and your unique value proposition. Uh, you can do a little bit of research and find out a ton of stuff on a brand message. When developing your personal brand statement or message, you want to make it memorable, short, and say something in there that uh, grabs somebody's attention. Now, I've read a bazillion samples, and boy, a lot of them are very, very boring. So. Um, go ahead and write it, and like I say, maybe one to two short sentences, and then everywhere you see a normal, really boring word, you know, go go to a dictionary or go online and try to find a replacement word that's a little more attention grabbing um, than what maybe you. And so, but get started, you know, type out something, and if you can't make it any better, stick with that for a while. You can always change your personal brand statement. So. Um, with a personal branding statement, you are the one controlling your real life message and you can make it say anything that you'd like. Um, think of it as your own personal slogan. So if you're going to have your own personal brand, you might as well have your own personal slogan. Some people even go as far as to having their own personal logo and uh, nothing wrong with that. So that's all part of building that personal brand. Building a personal brand is basically exactly like building a brand for a company or a product, only 
you are the product. So, you know, there's definitely differences, but it's kind of the same concept. So, um, so if I did, now I don't really use a uh, brand statement. Um, again, one of the things that you'll learn, and I probably need to repeat it on every show, is uh, do as I say, not as I do. So um, I've never really thought about having my own uh, brand statement. But if I did, it might be something like this. I, I wrote this last night. It's a uh, 20 year entrepreneur with complete freedom, motivating unhappy dreamers to escape their day jobs by investing time into an online side gig. So that's, uh, that would be, you know, that's uh, my first attempt at making a branding statement. Now I did attend a Damon John speech uh, a couple months ago. He was over in Stillwater and he was talking about being an entrepreneur and being on Shark Tank and all that. And he talked about uh, people branding themselves and he thought everybody needed to come up with a um, two to five word motto. And he stressed how you needed to maybe keep it under five words, but within five words, you needed to describe who you are, what your goals are at that given moment. And so he had, he had one motto that he used and then I think he had gotten ill and had come up with another motto. But anyway, when I got home that night, I thought, you know, that's kind of cool. So I came up with, so I use a motto on that buzzguy.com, the website underneath my picture. And so rather than having a longer uh, personal branding statement, I have a personal brand motto, I guess is what you call it. And this is it. It is adventurous entrepreneur happily journaling in sneakers. So that kind of describes me as succinctly as possible. Adventurous entrepreneur happily journaling in sneakers, which that's pretty darn true because uh, that's me. So uh, think about your uh, brand message. And, you know, one of these days, so every one of these little sections that I'm talking about, we could always go back and somewhere down the line, I may, you know, we could probably do a entire episode on just any one of these sections. And you know, I might get wild and crazy and actually have a guest or two on the show at some point, but it, it wouldn't be people that you would think it would be. I'm, I would be looking for unique uh, individuals and things like that. So um, the next thing you need to think about as you are building your personal brand is building an audience. Now, without an audience, you pretty much got nothing. Um, you can have the coolest logo, the coolest name, the most sophisticated, best looking website. You can have the craziest looking social media platforms, you know, but without an audience, it doesn't matter. Nothing's going to help you out. You're not going to make any money. You're not going to be uh, helping anybody. And, and, you know, that's my main goal is to help people. But without an audience, without anybody out there to help, you know, there's just nowhere to go. So you've got to build that audience. So building a personal brand will elevate you to what we call an influencer status. Now, I kind of consider myself maybe a micro influencer, not quite an influencer. You know, that would be somebody with a huge following. And like I've said on earlier episodes, though, don't get caught up in having, thinking you have to have a hundred thousand followers or a million followers because it's just not true. If you have a thousand loyal, and I mean, you know, pretty loyal followers, you can make a decent living uh, doing a whole bunch of different things online. So um, even if you get to like 5,000, you know, if you can get, you know, a thousand of those 5,000 to, you know, do what you need them to do, purchase things or things like that, then you can still make a living. So, so don't get caught up in the huge numbers, but uh, you are going to need somewhat of a uh, audience to be following you to start making money and to start reaching people. And that also, the more people that you get to follow you and your numbers do begin to grow and then people begin to mention you and link to you and share things on their social media, that helps build your trust and authority in your field because other people see somebody that may be is influential in their mind. And if that person keeps saying, hey, you ought to listen to this dude's podcast, it's, you know, he's got some really great ideas or information, then that uh, person in your audience is helping build your personal brand and your trust and your authority. So the more people you can get talking about you, and that's what it's all about, people talking about you is uh, going to influence your brand and even your reputation. Uh, people like to follow interesting leaders that stand out, inspire, 
and look at things in a unique way. So if, uh, if everybody was exactly the same, we'd all be following the same person. And that's just not the way it is. So pick out the people that you associate with, you like the things that they say, the things that they stand for, that is their personal brand, and that's probably part of your personal brand. And I think what we, what we probably will find out, uh, if you think about it, the people that you follow, your personal brands are probably a little bit similar to each other. A personal brand will help you become a leader of an audience. And again, that audience is going to be what pays the bills. That audience will become your followers and they will continue to consume your content and your products. And again, that's what it's all about. You want people to purchase your information or listen to you. So, so what my main deal right now is, is making money with advertising. So the more people I can get to my blog, that's more eyeballs, and then I put ads on the website and then people either there's impressions or people click on things and then I get paid by my advertiser or on this podcast uh, right now I don't have an advertiser but rather than selling you all a course or making you pay a subscription um, maybe I'll have an advertisement or two on this blog or on this podcast so if you would like to advertise on that buzz guy podcast get a hold of me buzz at buzzheadmedia.com and I will get you on but uh, so that's how I'm going to make my money in the beginning stages is basically just off of advertising. So to make money on advertising, what you're going to learn, and I learned years and years ago, is the bigger your audience, the easier it is to make money with advertising. And advertisers will begin to notice if you start to build an audience. And again, it doesn't have to be 500,000. Uh, it could be, you know, 20,000 or it could be 5,000. It just, you know, it depends on what the niche is, where your location is, and things like that. So uh, continue to build that audience. Get people, you've, and don't be afraid to ask. I mean, just flat out, like I've asked you guys, flat out ask people to sub subscribe to your things, and that's where, um, you know, it, that's going to be the best way to stay in touch with them. Build that email list. Your personal brand is going to need an email list, so get that email list set up on MailChimp or something like that. Get people to sign up for that. Uh, get them to subscribe to your YouTube channel. Get them to subscribe to your podcast. Now, you want them listening and, and watching, but uh, those subscription numbers uh, help, especially with YouTube. I believe when you get to 1,000, you get to do some extra things. And then as far as a podcast, the more subscriptions you have, the higher up you start to work your way. And then once you get into the system of iTunes where you're in the top so many, it just it's a snowball because people start seeing your logo and your podcast so they start listening to it so they subscribe and then it all kind of snowballs and it helps but you know if you're kind of hidden and nobody knows you're there it's kind of hard to break through on the podcast especially on the podcasting deal so uh, please go subscribe to that buzz guy and i would be greatly appreciative um, i believe that you should give your audience a nickname so if you guys i, I put a photo uh, of myself on this article on that buzzguy.com and it's got my big sign and behind it it says buzzhead so it's buzzhead radio so people that follow me i've kind of nicknamed buzzheads because i started enid buzz and i am that buzz guy so you guys are buzzheads and i think that helps it kind of brings people together and i think they kind of like being called buzzheads and it just kind of forms that community Lady Gaga, I mean, a lot of people have done it for decades and decades. Uh, Lady Gaga, she has her little monsters. Barry Manilow, I, until I researched this a little bit, I did not know. Barry Manilow's fans are called Fanilows. I had no idea. Now, I think we all know that Jimmy Buffett has his parrot heads. Uh, I don't mind being a parrot head and going to uh, Jimmy Buffett concerts. And then there are just, I mean, there are just tons and tons of examples. There's the Kiss Army. But I think um, naming your audience, giving them a nickname, kind of helps bring that community together, makes them feel special. It's definitely great on marketing merchandise and selling merch and gear. So you could put, uh, you know, I can do T-shirts that have, you know, I'm a buzzhead or different buzzhead things. So anyway, help people feel like they are part of your community by um, giving them their own name. Now, as far as your name, uh, some people may be asking, but when I start my own personal brand and let's say I'm, I'm starting a business or a side gig or a podcast or a blog, should I name it after myself or should I make up a name, like a kind of a business type name? And 
Um, you know, I am right on the fence on that. I, 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 either way, I think you could go either way. So if you, if you look at me, I am Curtis Tucker, that buzz guy. I went both. I decided not to pick. So if you go to CurtisTucker.com, you're going to get to my website. If you go to that buzzguy.com, you're going to get to the exact same website. So, uh, when I introduce myself, I'm usually, Hey guys, this is Curtis Tucker, that buzz guy. And now my license plate says buzz guy. But um, I use both. Uh, you know, you'll hear some people saying, you know, don't use your personal name as your business because then you can never sell it. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, yes, you can, but maybe not as easy. And then other people say, you know, well, don't use something other than your name. You know, so I mean, there's all, there's going to be, and I think it's just a personal choice. I don't think business wise or money wise or um, branding wise, there's either any, any one is better than the other. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, you know, I probably would have gone with Curtis Tucker and Curtis Tucker.com when I got this whole thing going, but my audience, my followers basically started calling me that buzz guy. Um, you know, I live 80 miles from uh, the nearest big airport and one morning getting ready. I think I was going on vacation and it was like had to get on the flight. So we had to be at the airport at 5 a.m. in the morning. So 80 miles in Oklahoma City, you know, completely away from my town. I'm sitting in the airport uh, looking on my phone and a guy walks through the airport who I didn't didn't know, didn't recognize. And he basically from the hallway sees me and shouts, hey, aren't you that buzz guy? And uh, that was kind of the one of the deals that really I th got me to thinking, yeah, I am that buzz guy. And so, so my audience named me that buzz guy. So I go with that. That's probably the direction I'll end up more than CurtisTucker.com. But, uh, you know, it might be easier to sell a business with a made up name. So, you know, I could sell that buzz guy. And if there was a, a different guy now, if people like that buzz guy because of my personality and it being me, it's not going to matter what you name it, because once you're gone, uh, it's not ever going to be the same. So you need to think about that when you go into this, into your side gig or business and, and think to yourself, is this something I'm doing for myself and I'm going to do it forever? Or if you think, okay, this is something I'm going to do for five years and then I'm going to find, figure out a way of selling it. Well, if you're going to, if you know going in that you're going to want to sell it, then don't use your personal name um, because people like Ralph Lauren or some of those guys, they've been doing it for decades. And so they have a name that has become a brand, which you could sell. But, you know, if you're, if you're only doing it for a short period and you're not going to have the notoriety that some of these other guys have, then... Uh, maybe you want to go with a more of a branded business name rather than your own personal name if you're planning on selling the business. If you're not, uh, you know, go with your own personal name. Um, Lady Gaga, you know, that is not her, you know, Elton John. Now, Elton John, he just, he changed his name. But Lady Gaga, that's, that's not her name. That's, uh, you know, a made up name. And she does really well in the music industry. But then on the other hand, there's somebody named Taylor Swift, and that is her regular name, and she does just as well. So, um, you know, like I said, I, I don't think it really matters. I think you, you're you going to make money, uh, de, you know, based on your content, your information, your style, all of that. So I don't know that it really matters which one you use. Um, and like I talked about, at some time, if you get so huge, think about these names, Walt Disney and McDonald's. How many little kids realized that there was actually a dude named Walt Disney? I mean, it's Walt Disney is like a place. It's not a it's not a person anymore. It's a place. And and McDonald's, you know, even though Ray Kroc built McDonald's into what it is, it started out as the McDonald's Brothers. But uh, you don't think of McDonald's as somebody's name. They become brands. It's kind of like uh, Kleenex. You know, people say, "Hey, give me a whether whether it's the brand of Kleenex." or not, instead of saying, hey, give me a facial tissue, everybody says, hey, give me a Kleenex. So so sometimes a brand name can become, you know, the name of of the item or something. And, that, and that, again, that's that could happen with a personal brand. So anyway, those are my thoughts on building a personal brand. And if you are trying to do anything online, if you're building a website, if you're, you know, um, I know Leo is out there doing web design. Everybody needs a personal brand. Uh, use a website to help promote that personal brand. 
but uh, get to working on that. There's tons and tons and tons of information online about building a personal brand, and uh, we may go into it. We may do a deep dive into you know some of the different ways that I can help or tips to give you guys uh, more ideas to building that personal brand. This was more of a generic 101 on personal branding, uh, trying to explain what it is, why you need it, how you need it, how you can use it. And uh, so anyway, don't forget, I am that buzz guy. I do the podcast. You can hear it pretty much anywhere that podcasts uh, can be listened to on apps. But the big one is iTunes still. So if you go there and leave me a review, I would love you guys to go there and leave me some comments or review. You guys can email me at buzz at buzzheadmedia.com. Um, I'm fairly active on Twitter, but it's twitter.com slash Enid Buzz. Um, I'm also uh, Instagram slash um, cartoons and Instagram slash Enid Buzz. And then you can go to thatbuzzguy.com. You can find all kinds of pictures, video, inspirational sayings. All these, uh, all of these podcast episodes are in written form. You can go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I need to have a thousand subscriptions so I can play copyrighted music in my videos and not get them taken down. And basically what they do is they end up putting you know, a little ad on my video and then the artist makes money off of that, but at least I'm able to play uh, some music. So trying to reach a thousand, I think I'm at 375 as of this podcast. So please go subscribe to all my stuff. I do have a Patreon <clears throat> account and I only set that up so I could kind of figure it out and learn what it is. And then one of these days I'll have an episode and I'll kind of try to tell you guys what the heck it is. At this point, I'm not really using it. It is there. You can donate money to my Patreon. Um, gosh, let me click on it. I don't even know. I guess it's that. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's that buzz guy uh, if you were to go to Patreon. And again, there's really no special features that you would get if you donated at this point. But again, I'm going to work on that. So please uh, keep listening. Appreciate you guys out there. Appreciate all of your questions. And uh, you guys have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. I will be back with more episodes soon. So see ya.